Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. It's 4 a.m. It's close to the time that I clock out. Uh, I've had a crazy journey of uh, learning how to code in college and then doing a bunch of internships in companies like Amazon, working on site in a company like Goldman Sachs and then just freelancing, working remotely and now I work pretty much remotely all day long. And in this video, I just wanted to discuss this, this whole journey that took me six years, uh, how you can basically crack something similar uh, in maybe less time than six years. How if today I wanted to be a web developer, uh, what is the path that I would take and what are the steps that I would follow to have a trajectory similar to the one that I've had in the past six years. Uh, this is a beginner friendly video. So if you already know how to code very well, this video might not be for you. Uh, but if you've not coded much, if you this is a field that you want to crack today or eventually, and you generally want it to get into tech, I'll be discussing the easiest uh, or the best roadmap that I can think of of becoming a web developer in 2023. With that, let's get right into the video. So I've written down six concrete steps that I would follow if I want to become a web developer. First three are extremely beginner friendly. The next three are slightly high level. There are a lot of videos out there around how to become an XYZ in tech. And what I want to do here is to really force whoever is really trying to become one to follow these steps, which is why I've tried to keep them small and digestible. The only thing that you have to do is not look at the video from begin to end and then move on to the next video if you can. Try to actually do the things that I've mentioned here and I think within six months you should be on track to either decide that this is not a field for you or go all in and, and do well in it. With that, let's, let's start with the first topic. The very first point I have is installing some version of Linux on your machine. Before you have gotten into coding at all, Windows is the primary operating system that everyone uses. And that's not the machine you want if you want to start development. There are a lot of reasons for you to install a Linux based operating system in your machine. The best developers out there are going to be using some version of Linux. This is the first roadblock that you need to get over. It took me around two semesters of my college to get a friend to install Linux for me. And I know it is hard if you're non technical, you've basically never done this before. So you basically have to grab a friend or if you have some extra money, you can buy a Mac. Mac also is based on Linux and it basically brings all the benefits that I'm talking about here. But if you have a normal machine, uh, then you can just install some version of Linux, maybe go with Ubuntu to begin with. There are tutorials out there around how you can basically replace Windows with Ubuntu. Or if you want to have Windows on the side, you can basically dual boot your machine, but have some version of Linux in your machine. I was recently at a hackathon in Delhi and I was surprised by how many college students were there who had Windows in their machines were trying to hack during the hackathon. Uh, it was very obvious and even looking at the winners of the hackathon, the people who had Linux had much more knowledge around the technical frameworks, had a lot of ease in trying to uh, put in the frameworks during the hackathons that were needed for it. And the Windows people were just struggling. So very simple, obvious, basic advice. You need to have Linux into your machine if you want to start web development today or tomorrow. Most companies will use Linux other than if you're working at Microsoft. So yeah, that's point one. Just install some version of Linux. Point number two is getting comfortable with some version of an IDE. An IDE is basically something like Notepad that you might have used to edit your files. Only as you start writing code, you need some more complicated versions of a Notepad. If you're a beginner right now, then there are two famous ones, WebStorm and Visual Studio Code that most people use. They're very similar to Notepad, so you should be able to understand how to edit files on them. But they provide a lot of benefits when you're writing code, especially if when you're doing web development. So step two is to install some IDE. And if you're not a beginner watching this video, if you already have VS Code, I would challenge you to use some non-GUI IDE, something like Vim or Emacs, and get comfortable with that. There is a learning curve in trying to understand these more complicated editors, but the benefits that you get once you get comfortable with them are huge. So if you're a beginner, install a basic ID. If you already have an ID, if you're still watching this video, then install something more complicated and get comfortable with actually editing code in it. Now, if you're a beginner, uh, you basically haven't coded before, then the next step is to start to learn a language. The two languages that I suggest that you start with are either JavaScript or Python. 
there are a bunch of reasons why I'm suggesting these two. They're loosely typed. They're easy to understand. They don't throw a lot of errors uh, during compilation. And this is good because when you're just starting out, it's very overwhelming to start to code. And if you start to see errors as you're coding, you basically get discouraged and then sort of leave it. The benefit that JavaScript and Python provide are, uh, one, they're very easy to write and understand. It's like you're writing English. And two, it won't throw a lot of errors when you're writing your code. Uh, your code will be bad in the end and it'll throw errors once it's actually running. But the good thing is like before you've actually ran your code and you're just trying to write a basic program, it won't throw like red errors at you. And hence you'll get small wins, which is very necessary when you're just starting to code. Eventually you should move to other languages and better frameworks. But to begin with, choose one of these two and start to write basic hello world programs in it. And once you've done that, the next step is to start solving algorithmic problems in it. The reason I'm suggesting that you solve algorithmic problems are one, you'll become very comfortable with the syntax of the language. And two, it's also helpful during interviews. Even web development interviews sometimes ask basic algorithmic problems. So you'll understand the basic sort of 50 to 100 problems that almost every interviewer asks. And you also get comfortable with the language. Once you're comfortable with the language, there's a platform out there called Deed Code. It has a bunch of problems that you have to solve by writing code. Start with beginner problems, sort them by difficulty, start with easy problems, and make sure by the end of it, you understand how to write basic variables, arrays, if else statements, loops, maybe that's just it. Start with basic problems and maybe just solve basic problems because your goal is to understand the syntax of the language and understand some basic problems that are out there. You don't have to solve very hard problems right now because your goal is to become a web developer as soon as possible. So make sure you're just doing enough. Again, the languages I've suggested are JavaScript and Python. The reason is most web development projects out there, or at least most of the startups will most probably use one of these two stacks. Either they'll have a Django backend or they'll have a Node.js TypeScript backend and the frontend will be React. Hence, JavaScript and Python are usually enough to build very big and very scalable web development projects. So you don't yet have to get into more complicated languages. As you scale, there are projects out there that are written in C, C++ and Rust, but that's a smaller market, a niche market, which does pay well, but that's not our goal right now. Our goal is to get that first job. So hence, JavaScript and Python, get very comfortable with the syntax as soon as possible, and then move on to building an actual project. This is where majority of the learning happens. So I was a JE kid, I gave IDJ, I was too much into physics and filmmaking. So when I joined my college, that was all I did for the first semester. But the way that I sort of got interested into coding was I built an, a flappy word game using basically the same stack, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. It's still out there. I'll link it in the description so you can look at how bad of a code I wrote five years ago. But the good thing that came out of it was I, I understood physics. I knew acceleration, velocity, things like these. And I actually got to code it and uh, basically use that knowledge over here. So there was some incentive for me to start to code so that I could sort of relive the physics, acceleration, velocity, things like these that I had learned. And by the end of it, what happened was that I, I basically struck some sort of connection with coding. And then from there, the journey became easy. So pick any project, build a basic web application if you want, like uh, build a bank, build a hospital database management system, build a game if you want to. And you'll, and you'll see a very sharp increase in your learning curve when you're actually writing a project. Because when you're solving algorithmic problems, you're basically restricted inside that uh, lead code box for your writing code. And your errors are also sort of very similar. Most of your errors are logic related. But when you're actually making a project, the errors that will come up will be language related, framework related. Sometimes when you're trying to deploy your project out there, you'll face some issues you'll need to understand what Git and GitHub are and how they work. So in this process, you'll get a holistic understanding of all the things that you need to sort of get into a job eventually and, and code. And your first project will be shitty. It's bound to be shitty. The best thing you can do is get that shitty project out there as soon as possible. And then eventually you can optimize your code or write better code in the future projects. But the first goal is to get something out there deployed on the internet that other people can use. And now this is the right time to start switching between algorithmic development and writing projects and web development code. This for me was close to the end of second year when I started applying for Google Summer of Code, started making open source development contributions. And at the same time I had an ICBC team and we were preparing for ICBC to sort of go to the regionals that year. So for the next few months, I would suggest you make your algorithmic skills stronger because that will help you during your initial screening interviews. At the same time, start diving deeper into frameworks, start writing better code than you would have in your first project 
it and start contributing to open source. If these two things you can manage for a year or two, you're basically sorted to become a web developer. The only thing that's left now is actually getting a job. And for that, I'm going to suggest three methods. No one's better or worse. The first one is to get into some big tech company. These are companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook. Current market sentiment is a little weird and hence it might be slightly difficult to get into these companies. Some of these have freezes and some of these are a little cautious while hiring at the moment, but the market will recover eventually. And when it does, it's easiest to get into one of these companies because there's bulk hiring happening in these companies. And a lot of times the hiring is based on standard algorithmic problems, which I'm hoping you've solved a lot of by this time. The benefits that come with joining a big tech company, which for me was Goldman Sachs, was one, you understand how you work in a big company. Two, it's much more chilled out than a startup. The learning curve might be slightly lower, although it is highly dependent on your team, but it's a good way to sort of understand whether or not this is a good lifestyle for you. The next one is working at startups. There are a lot of startups out there and also a lot of startups have a lean stack of what we've discussed until this point, which is Node.js or Python for the backend and React for the frontend. If you've made a few projects up until this point, your algorithmic skills don't even matter. Start applying to startups. LinkedIn is a decent place to reach out to founders. Since startups are so small, sometimes you can directly reach out to the founder or the CTO of the company. Or if it's a mid-sized startup, you can reach out to the HR directly and basically tell them you're a web developer. Since this is your first job, you can start out at an entry level role or a junior role, and then eventually either grow into the team or move places. But it's good for you to get that first experience out there because after that, you're an experienced developer. You're no longer a fresher. And and then that comes with a lot of perks and leverage when you're negotiating your next offer. The third one, which I feel is the most difficult one, especially in markets like these, is to start working remotely. The first thing you have to do there, which is the most important thing, is start showcasing your work on GitHub. Start contributing to open source. The selection criteria is very random. The way to find these companies is very random. And this is only if you are very confident in your skills. And since this is a beginner friendly video, I don't know if I would suggest this at this point. But if you feel like during this journey of trying to understand web development, you've become an expert in some field, let's say React, and you have enough knowledge to maybe either contribute to the framework itself or some other libraries that are very actively used. And you can showcase that on your GitHub, then you can actively get reached out as well. And even if you don't, you can reach out to either most probably startups, not big companies. But if you have the talent and you've showcased it on GitHub, you can get hired remotely in a bunch of startups that pay really well. These are niche startups and there's not a lot of material or like a straight path to get hired into these, which is why uh, not a lot of people sort of apply to these companies. But it is a path and it's probably the most lucrative path amongst the paths that I've discussed here. And even for me, it took me around six years to get here to become a remote software developer. It's not really a race. Uh, doesn't matter when you get there or where you get. The good thing is if you're trying to get into tech, if you're thinking of becoming a software developer or a web developer, the field is very lucrative and the market is still growing. Whichever of these jobs you end up doing, you'll basically end up doing great. So my only advice if you haven't yet started coding would be one, change your operating system to a Linux based machine. Two, get comfortable with an IDE. Three, understand JavaScript or Python, one of these languages. Algorithmic coding, start some project, contribute to open source and apply for that job. With that, let's end the video and I'll see you in the next one.